how do I feel about tape VSTs? I love tape VSTs. They're extremely convenient. They get the job done. I look at tape VSTs kind of like a, like a ramen packet of flavoring. It's got MSG in it. It's just really salty. It's probably not good for you, but it gets the job done. Like if you just want a cheap flavor and you need it instantly, you need that ramen packet. That's a tape VST. Why do I love tape VSTs? They're like nine tenths of the, they're like nine tenths of the thing. Today, we're gonna be looking at tape VSTs. When we look at tape VSTs, what are we focusing on? We're gonna be focusing on wow and flutter. We're also gonna be focusing on saturation. So our focus today is on wow and flutter and it's on saturation. If you don't know what those are you will by the end of this video the other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at like a basic comparison the vsts that we're going to compare are sketch cassette you can see them over on the right here we've got sketch cassette one and two we've got chow tape we're going to be looking at soft tube dirty tape we're also going to be looking at kalem audio and they have cassette one and two and then lastly we have archuria's mellify so those are the seven vsts that we're going to look at today so the first question how do i feel about them I'm going to be honest, like I'm not a purist. I don't look at them like, oh, this is lousy. This is a cheap version of what the real thing is. I look at tape VSTs like they're really useful. And I look at them like there's something I can use in conjunction with real tape. My recommendation is to use tape VSTs with real tape. You get the best of both worlds. Um, you get analog warmth, but you also can dial in how broken it is. You don't have to keep an arsenal of broken cassette decks. You can break it in your DAW and then bounce it to tape. If we listen to our digital audio here, our digital chords sound like this. Next, we have our cassette. Okay, awesome. Um, I think that you can already tell there's a huge difference between the digital audio and the tape audio. What are some differences? First off, these chords feel like really clean. There's no hiss. There's little saturation. They feel a little thin. They almost feel plastic and fake. Um, I know that a real Rhodes is probably sampled when making this piano. Again, this is the Scarby Mark I by Native Instruments in Contact. As soon as I bounce it to tape though, the recording feels already like that much more intimate and close. Um, if we zoom in on this sound wave here, look at this audio dropout that happens on the left channel. I'll play it one more time. And this is the stuff that I love real cassettes for. This is a happy accident. This is an artifact that was created in the recording. It's an imperfection in the recording process. Since the cassette is like an actual mechanism, right? Um, it moves around like, like a wheel. There's no electronics moving it forward. Um, it's all torque and pulleys. It's just like classic physics. Now, if I pull up sketch cassette here, there's two sketch cassettes. There's the first one that looks like this. Here they nailed the hiss. The hiss is there. So this is what we were able to create with Sketch Cassette, just dialing in a quick tone. Compared to our original. Um, here is Sketch Cassette 2. Sketch Cassette 2 is awesome. So the wow here at first does really wide and slow pitch modulations. Flutter, on the other hand, does really short, quick, fast pitch modulations. It makes it sound like it's going up and down really quickly. Um, so why don't we listen to that? You can hear that seasick tone.
Yeah, I hope that you can see we can already dial in that worn tape feeling without even using any of the hiss. Or our focus first was to check out wow and flutter. These are just words for pitch modulation or vibrato. Flutter is more like vibrato because it's short and fast. Wow is like pitch modulation if the record has been warped um, and it's kind of like, you know, not straight. So it goes up and down in these like seasick fluctuations, variations. Saturation, on the other hand, is just a fancy word for distortion. It can make things sound like overblown and overcolored, um, like a ripped speaker. Distortion, this is that like rumble or rattle, maybe growl. Just like if you're adjusting the saturation in a photograph, you can make it more colorful. If you adjust the saturation in audio, it makes it more rich. It brings out harmonic content. So moving forward with chow tape, why don't we check out chow tape? I'm going to loop this. Some presets down here. Woozy chorus. Pretty cool. I don't know. I mean, again, they can try and make it sound like old tape, but I think for the most part, it sounds really fake. These are really fun to use in conjunction with tape. Like you could obviously use this chow tape as like a weird chorus or like a lo-fi effect and then bounce it to an actual cassette. And that way you get the hiss and you get the warmth and the actual analog feel of like a real recording. But all of the warp you did digitally first. And that's especially helpful because a lot of these tape plugins emulate what it's like if you have a broken cassette deck. And my cassette deck works you know so there's not much wow and flutter like it doesn't sound like the pitch is all warped because it works sufficiently it works well so these tape plugins are great because it means you don't have to have a collection of broken cassette decks here's what dirty tape sounds like this one's a lot more subtle Decoupled can create this really cool stereo image because it makes the left side and the right side do things independently. Pretty wild. Again, this is more like a seasick chorus or a vibrato than it is like a tape emulation plugin in my opinion. On to Caleb Audio. Tape cassette one. We got the hiss. This is. <laughs> ah. Okay, so also cheap, also free. We have Tape Cassette 2. Same company, Kalem Audio. Pretty decent. Sounds much better. That's pretty close close to this. I mean, the hiss is there. <laughs> I don't know, man. Again, like a weird chorus. And this one's pretty awesome. I love using this. So um, I think that the final verdict here, if I could just sort of summarize what we're doing, um, our final verdict is that if it's free, it's probably cheap. So I would recommend, you know, like support your developers, buy a plugin, something like Archuria's Mellowfy or something like Sketch Cassette definitely makes the cut in my opinion. Sketch Cassette, I think is like 20 bucks. It's going to be higher quality. There's way more presets. You can also choose between one, two, or four for tape types. Um, and you can choose between cheap, value, standard, or master for each of those. Since Sketch Cassette has way more features, it's a plugin that you pay money for. I think I paid maybe 10 or $20 for this. I think it's definitely worth the money. I would highly recommend buying it. It's pretty awesome. Soft Tubes Dirty Tape looks really cool. It uh, functions more like a chorus. It doesn't really feel like a tape emulation to me. Wow and Flutter, we said, was just pitch modulation. It's also called vibrato. We might also describe it as chorus. It could be that seasick feeling, etc. Saturation, we said as distortion. It could also be like harmonic richness. Don't oversaturate it or else it's going to sound like overblown or like a rip speaker. We compared to our tape mix. Yeah, uh, they all kind of came close, but they don't really sound authentic to me at least. The real tape sounded much more hissy and much more bright. There was
there was also some like happy accidents. There were some artifacts that happened in the recording. The verdict is you can make it seasick digitally, but warm it up with real tape. That way you don't have to collect broken cassette decks. You can break it digitally and then bounce it to tape. You get all that analog warmth. You get that hiss. You get that natural degradation. This prevents you from needing to collect broken gear. I hope that this makes sense. I hope that this is helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please follow me on all streaming platforms. Link in description. You can also support the channel by buying my music on Bandcamp. Thank you.